The Arlington City Council is now in session. We're going to start off a little differently tonight because we have some news to share with you. You know, Gene Patrick has been a member of this body now going on nine years and has been ill for the past um, six months, five months. And tonight we received a letter from him, and I'd like to read it to you, after which we'll pledge allegiance and proceed. Each member of the city council got this letter today, and it says, Dear Mayor and City Council members, it is with deep regret and a heavy heart that I feel I must send you this letter. I would first like for each of you to know how much I have enjoyed serving on this council with you and to say how grateful I am to the citizens of Arlington for having the confidence in me to elect me five times to serve as your representatives. I must admit, I have increasingly missed being there to work with you over the last few uh, months. However, several health complications have kept me from fulfilling my obligations, but fortunately, the most complicated health problem is now under control. While I am very positive about my recovery, I have a very long road ahead of me. Therefore, after much thought and much discussion with Penny, my wife, I feel it is best for my recovery and for the council for me to step away and have someone replace me. Arlington citizens are fortunate to have confident city leadership, and I can honestly depart the council knowing that each of you will continue to serve the city, the city of Arlington with commitment and with integrity. Now that I am proud of what we were able to accomplish together, I'm sorry, know that I am proud of what we were able to accomplish together. Also, I especially want to extend my appreciation to those who served with me on the original Downtown Arlington, Inc. It is very gratifying to see that redevelopment is the beginning to occur. And it's a shared vision of many people who work together to make this a reality. I respectfully request that you accept my resignation as Councilman at Large, District 8, effective the date of this letter. Sincerely yours, Gene Patrick. We'll have a moment of prayer, please. We thank you for the freedom that we enjoy as a country, as a state, and as a city to meet in such a fashion as this. Father, we thank you for the way that you have prepared us for such a time as this in this city. Father, we thank you for the leaders of our city who give of their time as civic leaders to lead, and, and we pray that you'll be with them even tonight as they make decisions about important things, important matters as it relates to each of us as uh, citizens who live in the great city of Arlington. Father, we want to remember and, and to give thanks for this season of the year as we're called next week to remember to thank you for all things and for the ways in which you have provided for us. And Father, we thank you for the fact that you have given to us with so much and in, in, in ways that are so plentiful and Father, I stop at this time, as I've just heard this announcement, to pray for my friend, Gene Patrick. Father, we pray for continued healing, for continued improvement. Father, we pray that you would be with those, the medical teams and staff that are assisting him in his time of recovery, that, that you would give them wisdom to know how to care for him. But Father, I stop to ask you as a great physician that you would provide the healing that he needs at this time. These things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. We'll pledge allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Okay, I think we have one presentation, don't we? Salvation Army. I'll, you want know, to come up here or you want me down there? Okay.
You know what I bought? Don't you some money? Because I know every time I see you. you want to... <clears throat> Okay. Oh, good. I get another one, eh? Get one every year. You want to hold that? Yep, I do. So we're real thankful, obviously, to have the support of Mayor Plush and the way that he has supported the Salvation Army throughout this area. And every year, it's my fifth year being here, and several council members are here too. They come, and the mayor makes an honorary first gift. Did you already put it in? I haven't. Okay, I'll, I'll ring it and then you Okay. Can... It's a lot of money. Uh, it is? Yeah. Wow, all right. Okay. There all you right, go. First good. one. How about the city council? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'll do that. You ring the bell. There you go. Thank you. Can you put some money in there? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Did you get it? Sorry. There you go. There we go. Aren't they good? Just a dollar. <laughs> he wants change. Yeah. It's no change. Thank you. Okay. 100%. Great. All right. 100%. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I about this yeah, week. yeah. Good. So we're excited, too, that there is, again, going to be a mayoral or city council challenge between your, our mayor and the mayor of Mansfield, the mayor of Pantego, the mayor of um, Dalworth and Gardens, and hopefully uh, we'll also have the mayor of Kennedale involved this year. So he's going to be competing on, here's a date, you might want to write it down, December 17th, and he'll be at the Walmart on Randall Mill, so we need your support. Come support your mayor as he comes up in this contest. So it should be a good, we're gonna have even a kickoff event this year on December 8th. So that should be a way we can get, get some more support for him. So we're excited about it. Thank you, Mr. Thank mayor. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, God bless you. Good man. You. You want this back? Sure, I'll take it. You want no, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it. Okay. I'll bring it on the 17th. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much for coming down. <clears throat> Thank you. I have to admit that I had to borrow a dollar. <coughs> but I tried. Okay, we're going to go through the agenda tonight, starting with boards and commissions. We no appointments this no evening. Appointments. Okay. Then we have items from executive session. We'll have the city secretary to read those for council action. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight we have four items for approval from executive session. One, the termination of pipeline license agreement, Texas Midstream Gas Services, LLC. Two, pipeline license agreement, Magellan to Precinct Line, Texas Midstream Gas Services, LLC. And three, three and four, the seismographic survey license, Dawson Geophysical Company, Rush Creek 3D. Do we have any speakers? We do not. Okay. Council, I need a motion, please. Second. And your votes. <coughs> okay, approved. Then we come to items from a, a consent agenda. Once again, she'll read those for council action. Thank you, Mayor. The consent agenda this evening contains 15 minute orders and the final readings of two ordinances and 16 resolutions. A, the minute orders seek to authorize one, West Taxiway Project Construction Grant, two and three, maintenance agreement for Polaris Integrated Library System Automation Software, an agreement for software support and maintenance of 3M RFID inventory tracking and self-checkout software. Four, requirements contract for fire hoses. Five, purchase of two unmanned helicopters. Six, contract for mowing of code violation properties. Seven, design contract of Rush Creek Restoration Area. Eight, renovations for the LZ Odom Athletic Center. Nine, Pierce Birch Water Treatment Plant Sedimentation Basin Improvements and Safety Upgrades. 10, purchase of laboratory information management system. 11, amendment number one to the engineering services contract for McKinney Street drainage improvements. 12 and 13, requirements contract for the liquid aluminum sulfate and hot mix asphaltic concrete. 14, contract for auto body shop repair services. 15, construction contract for Crystal Canyon Natural Area Trail Development. 
B, the ordinances seek to authorize one, zoning ordinance revision, expiration of specific use permits, two, continued taxation of goods in transit. And C, the resolution seek to authorize one, naming of OS Gray Wildflower Area, two, Arlington Municipal Court Juvenile Case Manager Ethics Code and Educational Standards, three and four, 2011 Emergency Management Performance Grant and 2011 Tarrant Regional Auto Crimes Task Force Interlocal Assistance Agreement, Five, resolution authorizing the custody services agreement with J.P. Morgan Chase for safekeeping of city investments. Six, resolution approving fiscal year 2012 tax roll. Seven, designation of a records manager for the city of Arlington. Eight, operating guidelines for Arlington Public Educational Governmental Access Channels. Nine, PEG Channel Operation Interlocal Agreement with Arlington Independent School District. Ten and eleven, the settlement of Reed versus City of Arlington case and authorization to retain law firm of Robbins, Russell, Englert, Orsic, uh, Uteriner, and Sauber LLP. 12, authorize execution of Texas Homeless Housing and Services Program Grants Agreement and Texas Homeless Housing and Services Program Operations. 13 through 15, Abrams Street, Collins to Watson, SRLS, Texas LLC. Abrams Street, Osler Drive to Great Southwest Parkway. Goodrich, Schechter, and Associates LLC, and Pinnacle Consultant Management Group, Inc and 16 ratify expenditures for emergency purchases for removing and replacing fuel tanks. Mayor Clark, this concludes the consent agenda for this evening. Okay, are there any items that wish to be uh, considered separately, Council? Uh, Ms. Wyman? Uh, Mayor, I'd just like for City Secretary to note that I abstained from C5. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rivera? I'm the same, I'm gonna abstain from C5. And are there any speakers? No, we don't have any cards. No speakers. Okay, Council, I need a motion. Move approval. I have a motion, a second to approve your votes, please. May I ask Pam to pass one more? No, no, or, or green. Okay. okay. Let's, let's vote again here. I need a, a motion from another person, please. And second. a second. Chief Stacey. No, okay. let's have, aren't you abstaining from something? Oh, she said she wasn't. Catherine's no. Catherine. Okay. Yeah. So that vote holds. Okay, next we come to public hearings. Did, I'm not sure we had the full vote on that. Did you vote on that one, Mr. Mayor? I'm going to right now. We have a motion, a second, your vote. Okay. Thank you. They're right. Approved, okay. We We're off that one now. Thank you. Uh, public hearings. First public hearing is um, specific, specific use uh, SUP 11-8, the images of blessing at 1178 West Corporate <coughs> Drive. And here to discuss this case is Brian Gilchrist. Brian Gil Gilchrist, come on down, please. Hi, um, I'm here on behalf of Sperry Van Ness Dunn Commercial. Um, we are trying to put in a um, little image of, of blessings. Um, they're at a 24-hour uh, daycare center um, that will be going in. We're applying for a special use permit. Um, not really prepared for this. Council, do you have any questions for Mr. Gilchrist? Do we have enough information? Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay, do we have other speakers? I'm sorry, we have two non-speakers here in support. A Brenda Avery. Stand, you could please. Raise your hand or stand. Okay. And Alan Avery. Alan Avery, okay. All in support, right? <laughs> Nobody in opposition? Uh, no, and no, no speakers. Okay. Council, do you have any words before I close the public hearing? Okay, I'm gonna close the public hearing and ask council to take action. Move approval. Your motion second or in, I need your votes, please. Approved. Next we come to a continued public hearing, continued from two weeks ago, uh, concerning the gas drilling and production ordinance. Uh, Mr. Perzon, did you want to say a few words? Or do we have somebody here to discuss it? Uh, we just have had a work session this afternoon, Mayor, and it's a continued public hearing, so. Okay. Do, so we have speakers? We do. Um, we have two speakers in support, four speakers 
Uh, four non-speakers in support, and then we have 17 speakers in opposition. Okay, we give each person two minutes. First of all, let's go to the support side. All in support, there are non-speakers. Would you please stand up for just a moment? Support, non-speakers. Non-speakers in support? Non-speakers in support. There were four. Supposed to be four, okay. Then let's go ahead down the line here and call on people to speak. First speaker in support is Kimberly Franklin. In support. Kimberly Franklin, Augusta Lane. I support the gas drilling ordinance revisions. Some items that the P&Z commissioners discussed and felt were important were omitted, however. Perhaps the most important was to require pre-drilling water and soil testing to establish a baseline data set. The data set should be part of the permanent record. After the wells are plugged, how can the drill site be restored to the pre-drill condition if no testing is performed? At today's council work session, seven plus items were discussed and will be revised. While I agree with some of them, this hearing needs to be continued so those revisions can have a public discussion. If the SUP and gas well permit process are done concurrently, we will still have the very confusing process of SUP notification sent to property owners 200 feet from the SUP boundary, while gas well permit notifications go out to people 600 feet from the SUP boundary. Please make the revisions and continue the public hearing to allow comment on what you'll, what you'll be reworking in the ordinance. What was publicly posted isn't exactly what you'll be voting on. Thank you. Uh, any questions, Council? We have a question here. Yeah, Ms. Shepard. Uh, Mr. Perijan, would you clarify the issue that Ms. Franklin just raised about the SUP notification and the drill permit notification, it, please? The notifications is, is the 600 feet. The ability to, in the SUP, to protest uh, and require supermajority is within that 200 foot uh, radius. So there's two different numbers, but the 600 is the notification and that's consistent with the SUP and it's consistent with the gas well permit. Okay, next speaker. Bill Tittleson. Thank you very much, Dr. Club Council. Um, I wish to commend this council for turning on the Planning and Zoning Commission to go and revisit 07 074. Uh, it needed work. Uh, your Planning and Zoning Commission held nine public hearings, took lots of input, managed lots of data, had a lot of ideas thrown at them, and I think they came up with a really, really good uh, amendment um, to the drilling ordinance. Uh, in particular, the uh, noise section of this proposed uh, gas drilling ordinance is the toughest noise ordinance in the Barnett Shale. And you all are to be commended for standing up for the rights of your citizens to be able to live in their homes quietly uh, with drilling rigs close to their homes. Uh, I will admit I'm disappointed in a couple of the things I heard are going to be amendments. Uh, in particular, uh, I would prefer and was in favor of sound walls coming down within 30 days of completion. Uh, they're kind of unattractive when they're right outside your dining room window. Um, you know, I understand the concerns the drilling companies have, but it isn't that it's impossible, it's just that it's a little bit hard. Uh, and, you know, hard doesn't always cut it uh, when we have to live there. Uh, I also was disappointed on the backing off of the electric, electric rig requirement. I understand there's some uh, technical concerns with that. Also was concerned that uh, this won't be grandfathered to existing SUPs because it means I have to come back and visit with y'all again, although I kind of enjoy it. Uh, y'all are fun people. Uh, I do encourage uh, the council to uh, vote on these amendments individually so that we know where each of you stand individually on each of these amendments. If you package them together, uh, unfortunately, when we ask you in the future, you might say, well, I wasn't in favor of that one, but I had to vote for the whole thing. We'd really like to know where each of you stand on each of these amendments. Um, this amendment is a good thing also because it protects the rights of the mineral rights owners in Arlington. Uh, your constituents uh, got their bonus money. They're going to get their royalty money. These amendments don't affect the money going into their pocket, uh, so it's a win-win for all the citizens of Arlington. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the uh, cards in support. Just one second. Just one second.
And we have 17 speakers in, in opposition. Do you have a question? Yeah, Mr. Tillerson brought up the noise, uh, a noise issue. Um, what, what, Mr. Parajan, what are we doing on that? I mean, I, I didn't think we were doing any appreciable change to the ordinance on that. Council Member, we're uh, updating the noise ordinance to add uh, pure tone sound readings, uh, low frequency sound readings. Uh, we're doing a, a frequency analysis uh, as well as uh, making sure that the decibel levels uh, during the, uh, the daytime and the nighttime are averaged. Uh, so there's several different uh, uh, situations where the noise uh, ordinance is being uh, uh, taken into a more uh, considerable amount. Have we discussed that, Mr. Mayor? Noise? Yeah, okay. we have. Okay. Right. Okay. Then let's go to the other side. Okay. All people down. Uh, the first speaker is Connie Gosnell. Connie Gosnell. When you get here, just pull that mic up just a bit, please. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> just pull the microphone up just a tad. My name is Connie Gosnell. I'm from the Greater Alliance. Uh, Arlington Community Alliance. This is the second time I've come here, and um, I'm not going to give you numbers or stats, but from my heart. I've spoken with many in this town who, for whatever reason, don't have the courage to come here, so I'll be their voice. They've expressed fear, anxiety, and regret for not having more knowledge about what gas drilling entails before they signed a lease. Many complain of noise and odors that have heightened. The gas companies come here with a vengeance. They took over the land and waved checks in everyone's faces before anyone had a chance to really understand what was happening. Gas companies are granted wide exemptions from the Clean Air Act and Clean Water Act. Why is that? I will be the voice of those who want to say we need a moratorium on drilling to understand and regulate exactly what this industry is doing to our community, and we need it now. Our neighboring cities have done this responsibly. We have no assurance of this industry's safety, no knowledge of all the fracking chemicals that are seeping into our water, earth, and air. We cannot allow them to continue until we have 100% proof that it's safe. Do we have 100% proof? If so, I'd like to see it, examine it, verify it, and hand it out to the people of this community and let them know they are indeed 100% safe. Not the gas company's words, not your words, actual documentation to support all claims of 100% safety beyond any measure of doubt. You cannot have drilling even done well and get zero impact. I come to you humbly and ask for further study before any ordinances are passed. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Um, Jesse, I'm sorry, I can't read your last name. Purple Land Management LLC. Next in line will be Ken Feel, Karen Arrington, and Kim Feel. Hi, city council members. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, having us out tonight. Um, first of all, I want to uh, thank the city of Arlington for being a beacon of light in these difficult economic times. And to uh, I want to thank you guys for allowing the Barnett Shell to continue to thrive in this area. Uh, if it wasn't for you guys, um, uh, a lot of the, the drilling and things that have been able to provide thousands of jobs and one of the only stimulus is pack packages in the United States that isn't government funded, um, it wouldn't exist. So I want to thank you guys. Um, <clears throat> oftentimes, uh, gas and domestic energy is, is, is one of the things that has been put on the public forefront over the past, uh, you know, couple of years. And, uh, you know, all only thing that I can speak about is Purple Land Management is a company that's been founded right here in the Barnett Shell. And we provide um, over 100 jobs to good people that live right here in the city of Arlington, Fort Worth, and whole Barnett Shell area. So um, I'd like to basically reiterate to you guys that we want you guys to continue to support this, support drilling, because by supporting drilling, you're supporting jobs in times that we need to be able to support jobs. Um, outside of that, that's, that's as much as I can say. I just want to thank everyone for their continued support and um, thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Ken Field. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, the Arlington 
Chamber Foundation wrote in their uh, policy project, phase one, final report, dated August 1st, 2009. We live in a region that must expand its water supply by 50% over the next 50 years. We are confronting the challenge of urban drilling for natural gas. We have failed to meet the standards of the Federal Clean Air Act and must improve air quality in the interest of public health and to sustain economic growth. How can Arlington ensure future access to these essential resources while preserving our environment? The answer is a good drilling ordinance. If you could refer to Article 7, uh, Section 7.01H, uh, compressor stations, I would hope that we could uh, prohibit large gas gas fired compressors because they require high bleed finat pneumatics, excuse me. And this is according to Dr. Melaine Sadler. Low to bleed pneumatics should be mandatory. Uh, so let's put it in writing, please. And as the EGR Fort Worth Air Study recommended, catalytics or catalytic converters should also be standard on all the equipment. Our current electric compressor stations should require backup diesel generators to kick in if we lose power so we don't have another multi drill site emission event like that back on <clears throat> excuse me, April 11th. Any engine, compressor, or generator, whether a drill site or a compressor station, should not be fueled with cheap on-site, on unprocessed gas because raw, unpurified gas contains more smog-forming, non-methane VOCs such as formaldehyde and benzene. To reduce benzene, mandate glycol, dehydrators to run at 200 PSI and not 900. We hear so often that our dry gas has less VOCs than wet gas. Please understand that we have, by design, unknown, unconventional shell, pre-production emissions. Uh, so your time right. is running. Can you kind of Okay, just one more thing. As, just as a mineral holder on several properties, I expect council to mandate the latest technologies so my royalty checks are not shortened with drillers allowing methane to vent during pre-production phases. Thank Thanks. you. Karen Arrington. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. I'm Karen Arrington, a member of the Greater Arlington Community Alliance. The EIG of Fort Worth Air Study reported that Fort Worth has from two and a half to five, time, five times more methane in our ambient air than the average worldwide background. With heat or sunlight, methane reacts with halogens like chlorine. These chlorinated hydrocarbons are dangerous to our liver, kidneys, and central nervous system. The ERG study admitted that they could not address the numerous combinations of the relative mixtures. Fort Worth averaged almost 21,000 tons of methane losses per last year, which was only 20 times less than the total methane losses from the BP Gulf Coast disaster. This tells me that we can improve on not allowing methane, which is a potent greenhouse gas, to escape to the atmosphere. Through self-policing, the industry has demonstrated a callous disregard for our minerals by their inaction to employ best available emission control technologies. They are shortchanging our valuable state resources that the Railroad Commission had a duty to protect and have failed in that job area. In 2009, in Texas, 96% of the 80,000 violations by oil and grass drillers resulted in no enforcement action. The Railroad Commission received 681 complaints that resulted in the discovery of almost 2,000 violations. Again, 96% resulted in no enforcement action. If we have to endure the negatives of coexisting with urban drilling, we need to know that our local government has mandates in our ordinance for the drillers to use current technology to recover and meter our methane during the fracking and flowback stages of reproduction or pre-production so my royalty checks on the properties can be the economic boost that we're promised. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Kim Feel. Hi, I'm a member of the Greater Arlington Community Alliance. 
Councilwoman Capehart expressed the need for neighborhood meetings, even for those that don't own their minerals. These meetings need to occur before the special use permit, and residents need to be informed that the industry enjoys broad categorical exclusions from seven federal acts. Before anybody signs away their minerals, folks need to know that hydrofracking is exempt from the Safe Drinking Water Act. We need to mandate that our water department starts regularly testing for drilling affluents, like formaldehyde, arsenic, amines, and barium. Certainly, the 700-foot-long fluid spill of an unknown amount for five hours in our Lake Arlington, of which 95 barrels was recovered, should also tell us that we need to require metering equipment for these drilling ways so that we know how much is spilled next time. Drill site flooding has been a problem, and folks need to know the drill site storm runoff is also exempt from regulation. And the act of regulating aggregate small sources of air pollutants do not apply to the industry either. So when you see a drill site at each city block, know we are not protected from cumulative multiple emissions, and that's why we need a strong local ordinance. We need to limit the number of the wells on each pad site, because the more wells, the more emissions. The more permanent truck fracking traffic water excavation trips, the more infrastructure to maintain, and the more water intensive use in fracking and refracking these wells in a time of water scarcity. Administratively approving these wells takes the load off a of council, but makes NIMBYs trying to get the hell out of Arlington stuck with property that no one will ever want to buy. Thank you. Baron Yarborough. Next speakers will be, after Mr. Yarborough, Evan Langston, Lisa Ashell, and Mark Edwards. Hello, I'm Baron Yarborough. Um, actually a member of an uh, intern at uh, Clean Resources. I'm also a student at Texas Wesleyan University. I've uh, lived in the Metroplex between Arlington, uh, Fort Worth, and Dallas my whole life. Um, I see uh, both sides of this as a, uh, not as an outsider, but as a uh, resident. Uh, I see uh, many, um, economic benefits uh, that the Burnett Shell has, and uh, especially in uh, small business, uh, local government especially, and the quality of life. Um, uh, I have actually a list here to discuss. Um, the Burnett Shell has uh, impacted North Texas uh, for uh, $65.4 billion. Uh, it provides uh, over 100,000 jobs just in this North Texas area. And uh, it's over, uh, since 2001, it has provided over uh, a third of the, uh, academic, of the, uh, of the growth of Texas. Um, the impact for 2011 that it's giving, uh, that the Burnett Show is giving to this area, uh, the uh, North Texas area, is a 11 Point one billion dollars. Uh, I see the uh, burnout shell uh, generating a whole lot more in future years. Um, this, uh, the money that it receives in taxes alone is, uh, or it gives to local governments through taxes, is over five billion. Uh, five billion, um, and that's uh, nearly a hundred thousand million, a uh, hundred million, in. Uh, in 2011 by itself. Um, Sir, that was your beeper, so kind of wind it up now. The oh. buzzer with, with your time, so oh, kind of wind it up. Let's get us a closing point here. Okay, uh, but in my closing, I would just like to say that uh, uh, I'm not here saying that uh, regulations aren't bad and that y y that's y'all's duty is to watch that. Um, but I don't see these as regulations that are for safety, but as regulations that could harm the overall development of Arlington and of North Texas. Okay, thank you. Just one second. Mr. Rivera, never mind. No questions. Evan Langston. Good evening. Thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Evan Langston. I'm with uh, Clean Resources, a coalition 
of concerned citizens, small business people, and other Texans who represent the thousands of jobs that the Barnett Shell has created. I'd like to thank the council for holding this second set of hearings, it reflects your recognition that drilling is an issue uh, vital to the area and that the public has a necessary role in shaping policies that affect the industry. Having said that, I hope that these additional hearings shed further light on this matter and the matter of drilling companies to operate responsibly. I would argue that despite what we continue to hear from the anti-fossil fuel activists, that they already do operate cleanly. These separate air, there has been three separate air quality studies in the Barnett and have concluded that no real threat to the community well-being. Well -being. There is not a single proven case where hydraulic fracturing has caused a water problem in the Barnett. And a recent study from the University of Texas says that there's no link between fracturing and groundwater contamination. In other words, drilling companies and the processes by which they extract natural gas are being responsible in their operations. So this isn't really whether the energy industry is acting responsibly, it's whether policymakers will re regulate responsibly in the face of continuing unwarranted assault on the Barnett and the companies that work there, and of course the economic driver, which is the small businesses that support them. I for one know the importance of natural gas industry uh, where it in a day economic downturn where other companies are not hiring, the natural gas industries are. Uh, there is a, an extreme downside to unnecessary regulation and it is serious. It could extremely slow and potentially even stop the engine that is powering the economic growth and the prosperity in North Texas. It could cripple the development of the cleanest, greenest, most abundant, most affordable energy resource in the United States, a significant weapon in the fight against greenhouse gas emissions smog, acid rain, and poor, poor air quality. My point here is not to suggest that regulation has, not, has no legitimate role in public policy. We all understand that it does. My point is that any such regulation should be responsible based on facts rather than fears, enhanced rather than hinder our quality of life. And I believe that the ordinance now being considered misses those marks on every level. Sir, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa Ashell. Hello, my name is Lisa Altschul and I live on Murwick Street with zip code 76016. My property is part of the Bruder Pad site and also one of the negotiators for the Mana Lease. The Mana Lease represented over 2,000 Arlington homeowners. The City of Arlington has proposed several well-intentioned ordinance changes for the permitting of natural gas wells in the area. I support many of the proposed changes that I believe will enhance the production of natural gas. However, it is clear that some of the unnecessary changes could ultimately prove to be harmful to the economic vitality of the City of Arlington. Therefore, I am opposed to the ordinance. A recent Perryman Group economic report shows that approximately one out of every 11 jobs, that's 9%, in this region is related to the natural gas industry. The industry has become as important as aircraft manufacturing and is more economic impact than DFW, International Airport, Left Field, Fort Worth Alliance combined. In 2010 alone, the Arlington ISD received 1.5 million in natural gas lease bonuses and an additional 229,000 in natural gas royalty payments. In the same year, the city of Arlington received $4.2 million in natural gas lease bonuses plus 10.9 million in royalties. These numbers do not include the millions of dollars paid directly to Arlington residents, businesses, as well as local taxes, state fees, and charitable giving paid by the natural gas industry every year. For 10 years and counting, the Barnett Shell has been a driver of the strong economic base. Let's keep it that way. Not all the proposed ordinance changes are bad, but five proposals could be adversely affect natural gas development within the city of Arlington. And they are the exclusion of all diesel rigs, no grandfathering of previously ordinance provisions, requiring 70% of waivers, including the right of way of city owned property, shortening of allowable work hours, and adding Lake Arlington as protective use. Consider the benefit from just one well. Revenue to local workforce and businesses is two million. Royalties paid to homes and businesses is 1.7 million. Local and state tax revenue is 773,000. Most pad sites in the Barnett can accommodate multiple wells. For economic impact, simply multiply the number of wells per site. I want my city leaders to keep our economy strong. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Edwards.
Natural gas may very well be the key to energy independence for the United States. A 100-year supply natural gas is out there. The longevity of natural gas is a potential game changer. Our country is experiencing a shift from other fuels to natural gas. The largest electric power generating company in the United States is starting the conversion from coal to natural gas. New York uses the equivalent of one BCF per day of fuel oil for heating. They have started the conversion to natural gas. The plastics industry is moving from cracking naphtha to cracking ethane. Chesapeake recently made a deal to provide natural gas fueling stations at pilots and uh, flying jays across the country. Asia is trying to currently lock down long-term contracts to import LNG from the United States. These are great examples of the ongoing conversion to natural gas. However, experts agree that there is one issue that could interfere with that process, and that's overregulation. <coughs> Regulations are required to ensure the appropriate technical and safety standards are met to protect human health and the environment but burdensome regulations will put a stranglehold on the industry and slow our progress as a nation. Some of these proposed, proposed modifications to the gas drilling and production ordinance will improve the process. However, others are prime examples of overregulation. By not al allowing grandfathering, the city is essentially changing the rules in the second half of the game and penalizing participants for their actions in the first half. I recommend grandfathering protection to the existing purchased and permitted sites. The proposal requiring that all pad sites be platted is also onerous. Operators in the Barnett Shale are sincerely con concerned with safety, human health, and the environment, <coughs> meeting the appropriate technical standards, and being a good community partner. Thank you. Thank you, sir. George. <laughs> sir, we have a question for you here. Sir, I have a question for you. Come on down. Yeah, there you go. The comments that you just made, were they made after your review of a current gas well ordinance and our revised ordinance, or those comments that you were given that were prepared by someone else? No, those are my comments. So I've, you have reviewed our current ordinance? Yes. Then you would know that we already require platting in our current, current ordinance, so the new ordinance doesn't change that. That's why I asked. I was confused. The legal description, I understand, is required, but I didn't believe that the platting was. It is. All right. Thank you very much. George Schlemeyer. Just one second. Um, Mr. Shepard, Mr. LeBlanc. Okay. Never mind. Thank you. Sure. Good evening, Council. George Schlemeyer, 1604 Oakwood. I'm here tonight speaking as a concerned citizen. I represent no organization, neighborhood association, or oil and gas driller. After reviewing these ordinances, the uh, changes proposed by city staff, I cannot support the ordinance as written. There are a lot of good proposals in this ordinance, but as mentioned, but there are numerous detrimental changes that need to be addressed prior to adopting the ordinance. Chesapeake and other drillers have done numerous things to improve the city of Arlington, such as new fencing along the Randall Mill Road on the north side from Randall Mill, Oakwood, all the way over to Westwood, just in time for interlocking. So I know the mayor will be glad to hear that. Chesapeake and other drillers have given a lot of economic benefits from royalty to the city, county, property owners, schools, and colleges. These benefits will be reduced if this ordinance is approved. Let's don't kill the goose that laid the golden egg. Let's make this ordinance a model for other cities. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Harriet Irby. After Ms. Irby will be Rick Knight, Charles Cross, Good evening, Council. Harriet Irby. And yeah, another member of the Greater Arlington Community Alliance. I guess you'd be surprised. Uh, number one, uh, solid evidence exists that gas wells have been con contaminated by fracking fluid. Number two, and this is my largest point, 
City councils don't set gas prices. You all are in charge of taking care of the citizenry and ensuring a future for the city. The most salient fact about a gas well is that the good times don't last. Star Telegram Sunday, November 13th. Natural gas production in the Barnett Shale is declining after hitting an all-time high in May. Prices have declined from $13 per 1,000 cubic feet in 2008 to below 360 as the current price. And some sales are a lot lower than that. And you know what? It's not your fault. And if you pass this ordinance, you're not going to be responsible for the price either. Ed Ireland, Barnett Shale poster boy, said in the same article, wells typically Barnett wells typically experience steep production declines in their first 12 to 18 months, with output potentially falling 50 to 80 percent. After that, production tends to pretty much level off. The news for Arlington, y'all better cherish that first royalty check and get it to the bank fast. What does this mean for city regulators? The driller's income will drastically decline for many wells. Maintaining safety and pollution protections grows harder as income declines. My income, your income, and the driller's income. Do your best now, pass the ordinance now before that price goes down. Okay, Rick Knight. <clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity. I think I'm kind of rare tonight. I'm a private citizen talking for myself. Can, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Sitting here earlier, I wrote down a few things I'd just like, I guess, make a statement for me. I live in southwest part of Arlington. I got my bonus money in 08, and I said, oh, boy, I just wait, and that royalty check's going to come in. I'm getting worried. I'm seeing an ordinance that I think common sense, nobody gave me talking points, there's some things there I think is going to restrict uh, the drilling companies to where they may kind of start drifting away. Uh, they're a business. They have to go where they have the least restrictions and they can, you know, make, make a profit. Anyway, I'm concerned about my dream of that little royalty check coming to my house. Um, I... And again, I believe the suggested change will adversely affect me as a citizen uh, about that royalty coming in. I'm opposed to any further restrictions on the drill companies. <clears throat> I believe, as an industry, watching the news media, being in Texas all my life, things happen, but this gas industry looks pretty good to me. I've had closer calls driving back and forth to work than worrying about the gas companies. I think they're doing an excellent job. I oppose the changes that will restrict the gas companies. I can't say everything's bad about it, but I think there's some things there where I'm asking you to vote no. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Charles Cross. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Charles Cross, and I'm president of uh, Oakview Estates Homeowners Association. Uh, we're the neighborhood directly south of the, uh, the Arlington White location, which my neighborhood is barely into Mansfield. And uh, uh, there's a line that comes out of that well that comes into my neighborhood of 200 homes, and it goes across Cooper and hits a neighborhood of over 450 homes over there. Um, we're concerned, my neighbors are concerned about anything in the ordinance that might change the future use of that well or the expansion as needed uh, to continue that operation. Um, so if whatever you do, we request that you grandfather existing wells 
uh, so they can continue to be used. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mishy White. <laughs> Mickey White, uh, 1901 Turner Way. Um, I just wanted to talk about the grandfathering issue again. Uh, my family's owned property that the White drill site is on since 1975. We made decisions based on valuable real estate, uh, based on the regulations and the restrictions that were in place at that time. There are homeowners who are opposed to this drill site uh, or, or who are asking for further restrictions to this drill site supporting further restrictions who didn't even own their homes when the first well was drilled. They, they bought those homes after the first well was drilled and certainly after the land was leased and the, the site was approved by the city and was approved by um, uh, our operator. And so I would simply say that changing the rules in the middle of the game is not fair. Uh, Additional wells on that site that are planned will produce over $9 million in royalties for those landowners surrounding the site, and that is yearly. And so to change uh, the regulations uh, in the middle of the game does not seem fair, it doesn't seem right, and it will affect a vast majority of the landowners around our site and the royalties that they will, uh, that they, the future royalties that they will get. Uh, speaking specifically to the last gentleman, there are four wells plan for the pool uh, south of our site. Further restrictions uh, are simply going to make it more difficult for um, our operator to drill those wells. In addition, we live in a different world than we did five years ago. Uh, the shale in South Texas is taking equipment, it's taking frack crews, it's taking drilling rigs away from the Barnett. And every time that additional restrictions are placed on the operators, they have places to go now that they didn't have to go five years ago and they'll be gone and they'll be in South Texas, they'll be in Pennsylvania. So thank you very much and I appreciate all you've done to help us in the past. Thank you, sir. Robert Miller. Robert Miller. After Mr. Miller is Jane Lynn and Alan Norton. Good evening, my name is Robert Miller. Uh, it's my brother-in-law that just spoke related to the white drill site. I concur with everything he said. Uh, we, we complied with the city. We met every obligation you guys came up with five, six, seven years ago. Um, now you're wanting us to make changes that are going to affect us for the rest of our life and our future generations of our family. We, we picked a spot on that drill site for a reason, because it met everything you guys required of us. Now you're saying that ain't going to work. So we're gonna to have to take up more of our land when we could have put that pad site anywhere on there. So I don't think it's fair that you can change the rules in the seventh inning. We met all your obligations. We're just asking you not to make these changes. And if you do, then the, the current drill site's gotta be grandfathered in. That's bottom line. Thank you. Thank you. Jane Lynn. Hi, I'm Jane Lynn. Municipalities, including Dallas, Flower Mound, and Grand Prairie, have taken recent timeouts and or moratoriums on drilling operations while their gas drilling ordinances are revised and strengthened. Some municipalities, including Flower Mound and Dallas, have created gas drilling task forces to work together to come up with stronger gas or drilling ordinances. <laughs> Apparently, our city has not approached this issue with such proactive measures. In speaking with many people out in the community, I've discovered a common theme. When the industry rounded up homeowners to sign leases, they were told, you won't even know we're here. We will access your minerals from miles away. Residents were never told about the massive amounts of chemicals that were to be injected deep into the earth and under the surface of their properties. They were never told they would have sleepless nights due to noise, nor were they warned about the health risks 
due to air contamination and water contaminations, which have been proven and documented throughout many parts of the country. Some homeowners are now dealing with cracked foundations and decreased property values, and our region is having earthquakes. We have now learned by listening to an audio tape from a recent industry meeting that the oil and gas industry uses military psychological tactics on the public and are even helping cities develop local ordinances. How else could they have gotten entire neighborhoods to sign on and convince city officials to write ordinances in such a way that pad sites would wind up a mere 600 feet from people's homes? The Greater Arlington Community Alliance has submitted to the city four pages of recommendations for gas drilling ordinance changes. I hope you will consider a moratorium until a strong ordinance can be created which protects public health and safety. Thank you. Our last speaker in opposition is Alan Norton. Alan Norton. Sorry? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. That's all the speakers. We did get an additional speaker okay. in support. In support, okay. In support. Um, Ed Pacheda. Ed Pacheta, 1104 Auburn Drive, Northern Arlington. I support the revisions, the proposed revisions to the drilling ordinance that y'all have come up with. I know y'all worked pretty hard on that. They're not as strong as I would like and not as strong as some other progressive cities in the area have adopted, but they're definitely a step in the right direction. A couple of deficiencies I would like to mention that I would hope to be rectified in the future. Uh, the, even the, with the current revisions, our total drilling ordinance will fail to deny drillers the use of municipal water supplies during the summer months. Flower Mound has uh, changed its ordinance to prohibit that. Water, drinking water, fresh water is at its most precious during the summer and we don't need to be spending it on hydrofracking operations. Secondly, I've had a, an environmental engineer, engineering consultant uh, with many years in the business uh, express to me his concern that our ordinance and others in the area do not require the use of potable water in the fracking process until the drilling has punctured, passed through the, uh, the lowest aquifer in the area that is uh, potentially a freshwater source. There are cities, in particularly Grand Prairie comes to mind, that use the uh, groundwater as a municipal water source, and we need to protect that. Even with the Admittedly, for foresightful use of the reclaimed water at the uh, the Northern Arlington Horse Farm site, which I, I commend for the most part, that is not as environmentally protective as it could be. Uh, we need requirements that potable water be used initially <coughs> until the aquifers are passed, and then the reclaimed water is fine once they have the casing installed to protect the aquifers. Um, that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was all the cards. For speakers, we did have 27 non-speakers here in opposition. Okay. The people who are here, non-speakers in opposition, would you please stand so we can see you? Opposition, <coughs> non-speakers. Thank you all for coming. Okay, Council, I'm prepared to close the public hearing. It is closed and ask you to lead us in a direction. Uh, Mr. Shepard. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve the ordinance. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine um, provisions that we discussed in work session. I think you all have a sheet in front of you. Um, it was requested that I think we take these separately. I, I don't care if we do that or not. Okay, no one wants to do that. That's fine. Um, I mean, for the record, I support them all, so whoever the gentleman was that wanted to know where I stood on them, you hear where I stand, you can ask everybody else where they stand. So with that, I'll make a motion to approve the gas drilling ordinance with the changes as presented on the sheet that you have in front of you. Okay. Yes. 
Can I ask Mr. Shepard to, to read just for the audience's sake? Because a lot of the, sure. a lot of the you know, for example, we're, we're not going to allow grandfathering. A lot of the concerns that were expressed here are taken care of uh, in this new re re revision, and I think uh, people will be pleased with it. So sure. if you could go ahead and okay. read it, I'd, okay. I'd appreciate it. Okay. And these are, these are not written in ordinance language. These are just kind of, kind of the substance of what we discussed in work session this evening and the council as a whole uh, came to consensus on. Uh, move the SUP and gas well permit through the review process simultaneously so that one public hearing on both public on both applications can be held. Require submittal of the Railroad Commission permit prior to issuance of city permit instead of as part of permit application. Uh, prohibit the use of diesel rigs and require electric rigs within 450 feet of protected uses. Allow the administrator flexibility to allow the use of alternative rigs if extenuating circumstances exist. Remove Lake Arlington from the definition of protected use, but state in the ordinance that drilling is prohibited within 600 feet of the lake. Remove language in the or current ordinance about platting. However, when we figure out what that plat is going to be, uh, consider uh, changes to the ordinance at that time relative to the whatever plat is created. Uh, change the removal period from 30 days to 60 days on sound walls with the ability to request an extension of time from the administrator. Uh, grandfathering, there's no changes. Uh, city-owned property, remove city-owned real property from the calculation of the 70% consent needed for reductions in setbacks. And on compressor stations, require a masonry wall around the entire site with council discretion to change this requirement based on surrounding uses. Is that a motion? Yes, sir. Okay. We have a motion with those stipulations. And do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Your votes, please. And it is approved with two no votes. So the resolution is approved. Okay, we're going to public hearing, uh, another public <coughs> hearing, nomination of General Motors. Triple Jumbo Enterprise Project designation, Bruce Payne is here to discuss it. We appreciate it when you leave, if you try to be as okay. quiet as you can so we can continue. Okay. Mayor, Council, Bruce Payne, Economic Development Manager. Uh, the Office of Economic Development is requesting your consideration of a resolution nominating General Motors to the Office of the Governor, Economic Development and Tourism, through the Economic Development Bank for designation as a Triple Jumbo Enterprise Project. Uh, the Enterprise Project designation allows General Motors uh, to claim uh, the state portion of the sales tax that would be paid uh, through their investment and other expenses related to the uh, expansion of the plant that's currently underway. Uh, the triple jumbo jet designation is a reference to uh, the overall level of investment that they're doing, which exceeds $250 million, which allows them to claim the maximum per employee of $7,500. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy Council, to. Council, do you have questions about the General Motors? Don't believe so. Not Thanks, indicated. Sir. So, I need a motion. I did have one card. I had a speaker. I'm sorry, that was a public hearing. Yes. Uh, Kim Field. <clears throat> Kim Field, 409 Elm, close to GM. Please deny this nomination due to the state of Texas triple jumbo enterprise is a grand polluter who by greed adds numerous gas wells to their property of which I have personally experienced witnessing smelling the sour gas. The following statistics win them the Triple Jumbo Polluter Award that I feel has contributed to what I found to be a cluster health effect in my neighborhood when I was collecting over 500 signatures in opposition to the Cowboy Stadium Truman Drill Site. In 2009, through open records, over 415 tons per year of VOCs was emitted from GM. In 2010, at least 562 VOCs, the numbers are still coming in. 38 tons per year of carbon monoxide, 58 tons per year of NOx, three tons per year of two part, uh, particulate matter 2.5, and five tons per year of particulate matter 10. And of these 562 VOCs, 37 tons per year are hazardous air pollutants. Over 
12% of this 562 tons per year is trimethylbenzene. That's 65 tons per year of trimethylbenzene. 90 tons per year of butyl acetate and 75 tons per year that is unclassified. GM may have been a staple to Arlington and has and continues to provide jobs, but we don't have our priorities straight. If we don't have our health, we have no wealth. Amen. Okay, Council, uh, let's go ahead and take item 10. Do we have any other speakers? No additional cards. Okay. So, I, and this is item 10A1. No, I'm sorry, it is not. It's General Motors. Uh, item 2, public hearing. <coughs> do we have other speakers? No, we do not. Uh, anybody in the audience who has not had an opportunity to speak on this subject? Then I'll close the public hearing and ask Council to take action. We have a motion and a second to approve. Your vote. Okay, it's approved. Now we go to another public hearing, the oil and gas lease, Chesapeake Exploration at Gene Shrickle uh, Park, lease number 11-008. Good evening, Mayor and City Council members. Stuart Young, Real Estate Services. Tonight you're being asked to consider a no surface oil and gas lease with Chesapeake Exploration for approximately 9.33 acres of land being a portion of Gene Schrickel Jr. Park. In accordance with Chapter 26 of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Code, any sale or lease of park land, you need to make a finding that there is no prudent or feasible alternative use for the underground lease and that every effort has been made to minimize any harm to the land. This is a no surface oil and gas lease. All the minerals will be accessed subsurface from the Bruder drill site. Um, so we uh, have no objections uh, to this. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions, Council? Do we have any cards? We do. Um, Charles Davis from Chesapeake is here, I guess, to answer questions. If okay. Council has questions for Mr. Oh, Davis. Do you have questions for us? <coughs> do we have any questions, Council? And Kim Field is here as a non speaker in opposition. Okay. Any others? That's it. Council, do you have any questions? Now I'll close public hearing and ask you to take action. Food approved. Second. Your votes. Uh, with one abstention, with one negative vote, it's approved. Let's switch one. Ten, one. Okay, now we're uh, at the Cambridge Arlington LP MOB Chapter 380, uh, and this is not a public hearing. Back to, there you go. Mayor, Council, Bruce Payne, Economic Development Manager. The Office of Economic Development is requesting your consideration for a resolution authorizing the execution of a Chapter 380 Economic Development Program Agreement with Cambridge Arlington Limited Partnership for the construction of a new medical office building located at 900 West Randall Mill Road. This will be a 52,000 square foot uh, facility. It will house can cancer treatment services, cardiovascular services, general care, and pharmacy services. Uh, the estimated employment for this uh, building would be approximately 75 positions, 55 of which would be physicians and 20 administrative staff. We are proposing a 30% grant um, that is equivalent to 30% uh, of the real property taxes paid over a five-year period with the opportunity of 30% additional bonus for 10% uh, being for target industry, 10% for use of minority women-owned businesses, and 10% for above average wages. Uh, I have, uh, I can answer any questions if you wish. When will they destroy the other building? Um, I don't property? know of their schedule, uh, Mayor. I think there's, um, uh, I'm not exactly sure of the date. I think it's pretty soon though, because we, they've been pushing us for the agreement. Okay, very good. Any questions, Council? Thank you. Myron Dornick is here if we have any questions for him concerning this case. Okay. Then I need a motion. Move approval. Second. And a second. Your votes, please. Okay. It's approved. Uh, announcements, Council. Anybody have an announcement? Then how about a citizen participation? We have three speakers uh, tonight. The first is Philip Seidenberg. Two minutes a piece. <clears throat> Hello, Council. My name is Philip Seidenberg. Uh, I own Green Cabbies, which is one of the pedicab companies that operates here in Arlington. Um, I'm 
coming up to speak with you all about a report that I submitted to you all uh, this morning, and I hope everyone will have some time to read it. Um, it has to do with ordinance revisions that I would suggest. Uh, I've been in the pedicab business for four years, um, and I operated in Arlington before the ordinance uh, took place here. Um, I believe the ordinance was uh, very reactionary in its construction. Um, at that time, there was 120 to 150 pedicabs coming up from Houston, Fort Worth, and uh, the Austin area. Uh, right now, the ordinance allows for only 40 pedicabs to operate here, and uh, as it's drafted, it creates some, some major problems for us to access our customers, our customers to access our services. Um, some of those examples would be um, game day goers having to walk uh, a half a mile to receive our services from one side of the stadium to the other, um, not being able to, uh, we're not able to, as short-term transportation, to take our passengers to taxi cabs so that they can get cabs on the other side of the stadium. Um, there's riders, uh, pedicab operators who don't have permits to drive. They haven't gone through the proper background checks because the owners of the companies are not held accountable for these issues. Um, and uh, one of the other things that's uh, problematic is the fact that the lottery system uh, effectively takes the business away from responsible owners every year as it's conducted annually. So if I conduct my business responsibly and do a good job and uphold um, operational integrity and operate to the city standards, um, I, when I apply for renewal, I have to re-enter the lottery and potentially lose my business every year. So um, I would suggest making an amendment that companies who do operate responsibly can file for renewal and keep their business rather than lose it. So uh, be happy to talk to anyone about these changes to the ordinance, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Kim Feel. Well, it went exactly as I guessed it. All the citizens got in their cars, they came here tonight. They've emailed you, they've given you, your two, the, you their two cents worth. These ideas were really good that came out of the public here. And the only ideas you guys used was Mr. Shepard's, because I was at the day session today. And I don't know why his ideas are more special than citizens. He's supposed to be representing citizens. So why did not any of the citizens' ideas get put into the ordinance tonight? I mean, Mr. Pachetta had a really good idea. When you punch through the aquifer, it does not need to be that reconstituted water. It needs to be fresh water. My idea of metering produced water so if we have another spill, we know how much was spilled. I mean, why, that was not unreasonable to ask. Now, while I applaud you for mandating electric rigs with special extenuating circumstances, which leaves a lot of room open for the drillers, these changes in this ordinance makes it easier to fast track these, per these wells. I'm still unclear about who gets notified. If you live outside of a 600 foot area and you don't drive by the road y'all chose to put the sign on, you find out about a gas well in your neighborhood when the trucks roll up. I I'm just not sure who wrote this ordinance. I know it wasn't the citizens. I know a lot of it had to be the industry. Thank you. Pat Kelly. Okay, different subject. Uh, I'm Pat Kelly. I'll back up to the Rhino Mill Park Nature Preserve. Uh, we've had uh, some discussions here lately about um, the consideration for creek bank stabilization in, in a very unobtrusive path to go right on top of that creek bank stabilization. It's the northwest corner of the Rhino Mill Park Nature Area. Now, <clears throat> This, this area, the Randomo Park Nature Area, has kind of gone neglected for many years because of some neighbors that had had some particular, well, one of them thought we all had privet, and then, this, then we have one particular one around here that doesn't want it, anyone coming anywhere close to his, his property, which is sort of unreasonable, but if you're like that, you'd probably be better off in the country than living in the city. But uh, this one area, we can create a very unobtrusive path through here and from Park Hill, from the street, you wouldn't even need to be able to see it if you're uh, standing out on the street or driving by, looking by. So 
there wouldn't be a whole lot of people that would come through that area because it's a neighborhood park and it's surrounded by residential streets. Um, I, I've emailed this to you guys, so y'all will have it, but there's some supplemental reasons for, for, for needing this uh, area with, and provide creek bank stabilization again. It's, the kids in the neighborhood already go in to the park from this area. And you pretty much have to be a gymnast to get in without falling in the bottom of the creek because as soon as you go past the park fence, there's a drop off of about 10 feet. And, and while your feet are actually next to the fence pole, the, the ground is actually at a 45 degree angle. So it's real, real dangerous for those kids in the neighborhood to be going through, but they're gonna go through anyway. So we're gonna, we would be a lot better off if we're gonna keep the philosophy of safe parks. It would be better to provide some creek bank stabilization, backfill that area, and then we'd have an area safe for the neighbors to be able to, to, to go in and out of the park. And, and I've already designed it to where it's not coming close to any of the neighbors. And I'm, you know, y'all give me a call so that we can talk about this. We can meet out there actually at the street. Okay, okay. council, Thank you. any announcements at all? You have any announcements? No. We're adjourned.